right now I'm challenging myself to see if I can make 128 regulation H teams that are each different from one another over the course of 128 days. Why 128, you might ask? At the end of the 128 days, we're going to do something special where we battle every team against each other in a single elimination bracket to see which team emerges on top. There will be some competitively strong teams, there will be some gimmick teams, and there will be some probably a good number of goofs and gaffs in there. So if you want to follow through to the end, subscribe so that you can keep up with each day. But without further ado, let's move on to day or Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we are going to be answering the question that everybody has on their minds. Is DDR viable in Regulation H? In case you don't know, DDR is uh, Dance Dance Revolution, which is a video game that came out a pretty long time ago. However, there are some people watching this video that will say that that video game just came out recently and I have some bad news for you. But the entire basis of this team is the Pokemon Oricorio, who has the Dancer ability. And if you don't know what Dancer does, since it's been a generation since we've had Oricorio in the game, the ability Dancer does is it allows Oricorio to repeat a move that is being used on the battlefield as long as it is a dance-based move and the move connects. And there's quite a few dance-based moves in this game. I wouldn't say that there's... Probably the most busted one is Quiver Dance, but we'll get into that in a bit. Um, but there's not necessarily a lot of great dance-based moves, but we'll, we'll see what we can do here. Starting off with Oricorio itself, we have its signature move, Revelation Dance, which means that its primary type will be the type of the move that we are using. So whenever we are in our base form with Electric Flying type, Revelation Dance is a 90 base power electric type move. And you can use the four other forms, however, Oricorio Pom Pom form is definitely the most popular. And then whenever we use our Terra type of Grass that we can use to evade things such as Spore, we can use Grass revelation dance which can put us in a tricky scenario but i don't think it actually came up during the games that i already have recorded uh, we got air slash for coverage and then we have quiver dance which will increase our special attack speed and special defense by one stage for every time we use it uh or Oricor cannot repeat its own dancer but other oricorios can repeat other dancers but because you can only have one pokemon of each species on the field because of species clause we can't have multiple oricorios and then we have the Focus Sash item just to give us the best chance of living at least one attack so that way we can get off a Quiver Dance and then be faster than everything and hopefully the Pokemon that is next to Oricorio can also get off a dance move and then they can, they can start dancing on everybody. Next up we have Volcarona who is a very good partner for Oricorio because it has both the moves Fiery Dance and Quiver Dance, which a Fiery Dance gives you a 50% chance to raise your special attack by one while also being pretty physically strong. And for this Volcarona set, I wanted to go pretty bulky, uh, putting most of our EVs into HP, but all the rest of them go into special attack and with a beneficial special attack nature. And then in order to help sustain ourselves, we have the Giga Drain option, which means that we can deal pretty good damage into water, rock, and ground types, which might beat Volcarona because of tight matchups. And with the Terra Water as a good defensive type, Volcarona has a lot of staying power, especially in this format. Next up we have Quaquavel, who is new in this generation as a really interesting dance Pokemon because it has a new move, Aqua Step, with it being its signature move that Oricorio can copy. And while Oricorio doesn't tend to use physical moves, the ability to get a plus one speed can help you with some matchups, and then we have some type coverage in our close combat, and we also have the knockoff to get rid of items, and then we also have the coaching in case we want to throw an attack and defense boost onto any Pokemon. I mean, Volcarona, Flamigo, and King Gambit all really like the defense boost because it makes them tankier, and Flamigo and King Gambit enjoy the attack boost because they're physical attackers. But there's definitely situations where you could argue that you could coaching any mon on this team, so coaching is a nice tech move to have that we got later in the second DLC. And then our EVs are just adjust, so we are at 143 speed, which is an important speed tier that you want to hit if you want to be one speed point faster than Timid Dragapult. I wonder how many of these videos I'm going to mention that the speed tier that you want to hit is Timid Dragapult, because I feel like I've mentioned it in three out of the four that I already have recorded now. Anyways. And then we also have the Moxie ability, which if we can get Quake Quavel to come in and pick up a KO with Aqua Step, it means that we can get an attack boost, and then uh, we can just get Quake Quavel to start sweeping everything. Next up, we have Flamigo, who isn't necessarily a dance Pokemon. It can, uh, you can take out Detect, and you can learn a Feather Dance, which which Oricorio can copy. But for an actual good set, we need to have a Detect on here. 
but the whole purpose of Flamigo is that we get a bunch of boost on our other Pokemon and then we bring it in and its co-star ability will activate which means that it will copy the stat changes of our ally. So if we have speed boost on Oricorio or Volcarona, Flamigo can copy those speed boosts and be a lot faster than everything else automatically. And with the White Herb negating a stat drop, I don't think White Herb works if Flamigo comes in and it gets stat drops from its co-star ability, but you can use moves like Close Combat that would drop your stats in order to become a little bit more bulkier, and you can negate one Intimidate with the White Herb, so it is a nice item to have. And with the White Herb, you could argue running Acrobatics instead of Brave Bird, but I don't really want to test it out. And I mean, come on, this is a Dance Dance Revolution team. And then we also have the Terra Blast for Terra Steel coverage, and if we look at our EVs, it kind of works out so that we are in negative special attack nature, however, if you get two special attack boost on Flamigo, it will become a special attacker because its special attack will go up to 170, which is a higher than 167. So, you just, you can have a special move in Terra Blast if you get your two stages of special attack, but it's not going to be that common. Fifth on the list, we have Comfey, who fleshes out a lot of the previous members, especially Volcarona, because Comfey can Drain and Kiss and Giga Drain at plus three priority because of its triage ability since Giga Drain and Drain and Kiss heal it. But we also have its signature move, Floral Healing, which means that we can restore any of our targets who have boost by 50% of their health, which is really helpful. And again, Comfey is technically a dancing Pokemon because it can learn Petal Dance, but Petal Dance is... Not that great, so we're, we're just going to keep the Protect. And then I wasn't really sure what item to give Comfey, but I decided to give it a Big Root just because it, just because it's a little bit of variety and it's nice to get a little bit more health from your Draining Kiss and Giga Drain in some scenarios. And last but not least, we have King Gambit, who is a really, really important keystone on this team because it shores up a lot of our matchups that we would otherwise lose to. Uh, we have a lot of good coverage here. We have we have the low kick as fighting type damage, mainly just to counter Incineroar. Uh, and then if Incineroar goes Terra Ghost, you can always just sucker punch it unless it's gonna parting shot you. But why would an Incineroar parting shot you? That that's a recipe for disaster. And we also have our stab Iron Head, and we can dance with our Sword Stance. And you might want Protect here, but Sword Stance I think was a little bit better than Protect. And then we have the Expert Belt to boost the damage of our super effective attacks so that uh, we have a pretty wide variety of super effective attacks on a lot of things that our previous mons don't do. And then we have Terra Dark just to get rid of our Steel Typing so we're not quad weak to things like Fighting type moves or weak to Fire type moves. And we put a lot of our bulk into HP and then all the rest of it into attack. And most importantly with King Gambit we have our Defiant ability which keeps uh, Incineroar at bay a little bit more because Quaquavel and Flamigo are fighting types. However, they, if we know anything about Incineroar, is that Incineroar can just handle them really easily. But King Gambit, not so much. With the Defiant ability, we get a plus one in attack, and if we have a plus one in attack, that's another thing that Flamigo can copy. So, I think this team actually turned out pretty well. I have six battles pre-recorded that were... They were, they all happened sequentially, but I, I didn't want to do the battles live because I felt like it would take too much time. I don't have much time today to record this video. So, let's get into some battles. So in this first game here, we fought a Trick Room team, and these are all best of one closed team sheet because because I'm running Dance Dance for Evolution. But our opponent has a pretty interesting spread of mons for a Dance Dance Revolution team. They do start with the Indeedee Milotic, so this gives us a bit of play uh, because Oreo Corio likes seeing Milotic, but maybe not so much Indeedee because Indeedee can just redirect the attacks. But I know that there's only special attackers on the field, so I get Volcarona to go for Quiver Dance, which Oricorio then gets to copy. And then Oricorio does its own Quiver Dance, and uh, Milotic actually goes for Coil here, and Ndidi gets up the Trick Room, which I always forget that Ndidi has Trick Room now, which is probably something that I should ingrain in my brain now that it is probably going to be more common regulation H for Ndidi to do that. But they decided to hard swap in their Ursaluna, and they actually miss the Hypnosis here, which is pretty lucky for us. Uh, we get Fiery Dance from Volcarona, and Oricorio copies it, and it brings Ursaluna down pretty, pretty low there. Uh, and Revelation Dance is able to bring Milotic down to a pretty low amount of HP. Ursaluna gets the burn from its guts, and I decide that I just want to waste some turns of their Trick Room. So we protect this turn as they try to Hypnosis the Milotic, and they get Leftovers and burn recovery, so Oricorio is brought down to its Sash, which is very handy that we had the Sash. Volcarona does fall asleep this time, though, uh, but we do get off the Revelation Dance, which allows us to hit Milotic, at least. They bring in Sinistra, so Ursula isn't going to be dying at the end of this turn due to Hospitality. 
Um, I decided to protect Oricorio one more time in order to get it through the Trick Room. And Machigacha doesn't do too much damage to Volcarona, and Volcarona actually wakes up, so it gets to Gay Drain the Ndidi for some of its health. Uh, we Air Slash the Sinistra, and that takes it out in one hit, and then we Fiery Dance the Ndidi, and that takes it out in one hit, and Oricorio tries to Fiery Dance, but there's no, there's nothing to Fiery Dance, so it fails. And with that, the opponent gives up, because they only have a barely healthy Ursaluna in the background. Moving on to the second game, uh, I encountered what is like half of a Dance Dance Revolution team. It only has Arcario and Kamo, I think are the only two that can dance. I, I think Crocodile might have Dragon Dance, but let's let's see how this one plays out. So they lead their Arcario and Kamo, and I lead my Arcario and Volcarona. And I think there's no way that they're going to go for Clangorous Soul while I have Arcario in the field. Because I could just have Arcario use a flying type move in the Kamo. -O. So I switch in Comfey, and then Oricorio protects, and they use Clangorous Soul, so I, I called that one entirely wrong. There Oricorio copies the Clangorous Soul, because Clangorous Soul is a dance-based move, and we don't get the Fiery Dance. Combo Terra astralizes into Steel, which means that Comfey can't knock it out. Uh, and they Baton Pass into Crocodile, and get the Iron Head with Combo into Comfey to knock it out, and at least Volcarona gets off a dance. So now we're in a bit of a bad position. For whatever reason, they decide to swap in their Oricorio here, which might be a bit of a bad play, even though they just terrestrialized their combo to steal and we still have Volcarona. But this allows me to protect with Oricorio, and a Crocodile power trips it, and Volcarona gets to Quiver Dance once, and our Oricorio gets to Quiver Dance once, but their Oricorio also gets to copy that Quiver Dance, and it Quiver Dances. So now there's just a lot of stats on the- Their Revelation Dance comes out, but because of our special defense buff, we live it, and Oricorio gets to copy their Revelation Dance into their Oricorio, which brings them down with their Citrus Berry. They try to power trip Oricorio, but Oricorio lives on its sash, and we get the Giga Drain into Crocodile, which knocks it out. As we Revelation Dance their Oricorio, and we get the knockout, so they don't get to Revelation Dance's back, which is really good. Last but not least is Kamo, and we get to Fiery Dance the Espathra as Oricorio copies that with its Dancer and the Revelation Dance from Oricorio knocks out Kamo. Yeah, yeah, we're good there. So yeah, a lot, lot of dancing in that battle. I don't think, especially with their turn one play, I don't think this one was too lost once we got off our Quiver Dances with Volcarona, because I'm pretty sure I had Flamigo in the back, and Flamigo would have been able to copy the boost and handle Crocodile and Kamo, since they were both weak to close combat. Next up, we have a bit of a balanced team here, except the water type is Azumarill, who you don't see all too often, and we lead King Gambit Quake Quavel for the first time, and they lead Whimsicott Azumarill, so I figured that they probably want Azumarill to get off the belly drum here, since Quake Quavel and King Gambit don't particularly threaten Azumarill, so I go for the coaching and the King Gambit in order to get it to plus one. They do go for the Belly Drum, and they have a Citrus Berry, so they get a good bit of health back. We Iron Head, and that comes very, very close to knocking out Azumarill, but not quite there. Uh, we do, however, get to pick up KO with uh, Sucker Punch on King Gambit as they Moon Blast into King Gambit, and we give King Gambit another defense boost, and they bring in Reelaboom, which tells me that they probably don't have Incineroar in the back, but I decided to switch out Quake Quavel for Flamigo just so I can get that plus two, plus two boost, and they Moon Blast into King Gambit, and King Gambit takes it because it's just neutral to the Moon Blast. They Moon Blast into Flamigo, and Flamigo actually doesn't take it, which at the time I really did not expect. <laughs> it kind of hurt me a little bit, if I'm not, if I'm not gonna lie. King Gambit with a plus two defense boost though takes the Woodhammer pretty well and gets to Iron Head the Whimsicott, who is not Sash. It must have been Cover Cloak. But now it's up to our three that we have left versus Real Boom and Ursa Luna. I sucker punch the Ursa Luna for as much as we have left, and Volcarona is faster than it because now the Tailwind is gone, so we get to take out the Ursa Luna. And now with just Real Boom left, the opponent, yeah, the opponent forfeits here because they can't beat Volcarona with Real Boom. This match is a lot of mons that I don't I didn't, at the time I didn't really think that they worked together too well, but however, a lot of these mons actually have interesting niches in the format right now, so let's just get into it. Uh, they lead Arcanine Hisui form, and they lead Decidueye, and I was hoping that they would lead Arcanine, so I decided to lead King Gambit, and I have Comfy for the healing. Our Defiant activates because their Arcanine is Intimidate, however, their Arcanine is Mirror Herb, so it gets a plus two boost, and we are in a pretty bad spot, especially since, as you're about to see, the Decidueye Terra steals because uh, it doesn't want to take too much damage from Comfy. 
We need Terra Dark so that we can live the Flare Blitz at least though, and I really hope that Decidueye decides to attack into Comfey, and thankfully it did, so we low kick the Arcanine and we get to get rid of that. Uh, Shiftery now comes in, and Decidueye didn't want to get Sucker Punched there, I guess, so they decided to swip in Hisui and Gudra for the Shiftery, and we now know everything that they have in the back. As Shiftry goes for the Tailwind, actually no, Shiftry went for the fake out there. We swap in Volcarona to try and get the Flame Body, but we don't get it. But Comfy does enough damage to Shiftry that makes it so that we can 2-hit KO Shiftry with the plus 3 priority on Comfy, which is pretty nice. So now, in the back of my head, I'm thinking all I need to do is get rid of the Gudra. Shiftry is able to Tailwind, which actually makes his Windrider ability, and Gudra Gyro Balls into Comfy, but it doesn't do any damage, probably because Gudra's kind of fast, and Comfy, since we're relying on all of its moves having priority, doesn't have any actual speed investment, which means that Comfy is only about mid-speed, which means that it actually survives the Gyro Ball pretty well from Gudra. If it was Heavy Slam on Gudra, this would be a little bit of a different story. Uh, we get to Quiver Dance with Volcarona, because I need to set up Volcarona in the back, and Shiftry cannot threaten Volcarona too badly right now. Uh, we Fiery Dance Gudra, and that gives a pretty good amount to it, to where I think that it's not Assault Vest on Gudra. And Gudra's trying to deal as much damage as it can into Volcarona, but uh, it seems like it's just not going to be enough. As Hisui and Decidueye comes in, and they give up because Volcarona is currently at plus two and can take out Decidueye. And we have King Gambit in the back with Low Kick, and we either had Flamigo, it's probably Flamigo in the back at the time, uh, who could easily handle both Gudra and Decidueye. Next up we have a battle against a real spread team here. They have a lot of rain stuff with Araquanid, Pelipper, and Baskew Legion in the back. They also have the Flamigo, who might just be the Scrappy variant, who I think we'll see on a bunch of other sets. This battle plays out, and I lead Arcorio and Volcarona as they lead Pelipper and the Sinistra. I'm thinking, great, like, I threaten the Pelipper pretty easily here with Revelation Dance on Arcorio, and I can click Fiery Dance, even though we're in rain, we can still do pretty decent damage into the Sinistra. So I think that they're not going to keep the Pokemon that they currently have in, in. So I decided to terrestrialize Volcarona to Terra Water just in case Pelipper attacks or has a Focus Sash. And we got our Quiver Dance onto Oricorio as Oricorio Air Slashes to try and flinch the Sinistra in case it's decided to stay in. But Pelipper actually decides to stay in in Hurricane and Sinistra sets up Trick Room, which... I mean, I guess that's a fine play from them. But since we have two special attackers against two special attackers, I still feel pretty good about the Quiver Dance, so... Ebon goes for the Macha Gachas, because it's super effective into Volcarona, and the Pelipper tries to hurricane Orcorio for at least a bit of damage, but does confuse Orcorio, but Orcorio gets off the Revelation Dance, and Pelipper wasn't even Sash, so I don't even know what we're doing here. I, I just get the Fiery Dance into Sinistra, and now it's their two Mons versus my four in the back. Araquanid comes out, and they follow up with Flamigo. I decided to double protect in order to stall out a turn or maybe a Terra, and they do terrestrialize a Rockwinid here. And I make the call that I actually need Orcorio and Volcarona in order to win this game. And they do get the prediction here. Technically, I think Quake Quavel would have lived if the Flamingo didn't close combat into. Actually, yeah, I guess since Araquanid is slower than both, and Araquanid would KO either target, they would always. always KO here, probably. Um, but they KO both Quick Quavel and King Gambit in the back, so I bring back in Volcarona and Orcorio without their boost and double protect so that we can stall out the last turn of Trick Room. They decide to attack and attack again. And here I actually make a misplay that they decided to protect Araquanid and I doubled into it when what I should have done was since Volcarona is Terra Water, Volcarona would probably live at least one hit and uh, even if Volcarona did go down, I would still have Orcorio who could probably KO Raquinid if they did decide to attack, so I should have Revelation danced the Flamigo and then used Giga Drain with Volcarona. Oh, I know what I what I was thinking at the time. What I realized I should have done at the time was I should have Quiver Danced with Volcarona so that Volcarona would then put the Quiver Dance onto Oricorio, and then Oricorio would be guaranteed to be faster than Flamigo as long as they're not like Scarf or something. And then Oricorio would KO Flamigo with the Revelation Dance, and then even if Araquanid did attack, it can only take out one Pokemon, and then I would have a boost on either Pokemon that Araquanid would decide to attack with, and that would probably get Araquanid. Then again, Araquanid is kind of special tanky, so I definitely didn't play optimally, but uh, my opponent was at least nice about it, and 
Uh, it's important to know why you lost whenever you lose. For this last battle here, we have what is kind of hard to call a balanced team. I mean, it's Incineroar, Wimsicott, and Araquanid, which is not a... There's not the Firewater Grass Core you would think about whenever you think about Firewater Grass Cores. They lead Dragapult, Sneasler here, and I decide to lead Volcarona or Ikorio, and I know that Fig Out is coming, so I decide to protect with Orcorio. I'm pretty fine with being faked out on Volcarona because it might cause a burn because of Flame Body. However, Dragapult decides to Dragon Dance, but that is a dancing move, so Orcorio gets to copy it behind the Protect, which gives us a free speed boost. Uh, so my Volcarona goes for the Quiver Dance, and Orcorio copies that too. So Orcorio is pretty fast and hits pretty hard right about now. We got all these stats, but Dragapult is actually still faster because Orcario is only around 100 base speed and Dragapult starts at around 200 base speed. So even though our speed is doubled to 200, Dragapult's speed is around 300. Uh, which means the Dragapult gets the Phantom Force first. However, we get to Fiery Dance down the Sneezer entirely. Orcario copies it, but it doesn't have a target to hit, so it just misses the Dragapult as they bring in Blood Moon Ursluna. Orcorio takes the Phantom Force because of its Sash, but I was okay with it going into your target here. We Air Slash the Dragapult for a bit of damage, and I was hoping that it would do more than that, but it actually does a bit less. Fiery Dance from Volcarona into Ursluna does a lot of damage, and Orcorio finishes the KO with its Fiery Dance and gets a little bit of a boost. So they reveal that they have a Rockwinid in the back, and at this point I just have to figure out how to deal with Dragapult, as I don't think I had King Gambit in the back during this game. Uh, but we're going to see Dragon Darts is able to take out Volcarona because I protected, and the second Dragon Darts redirects, takes a bit of life orb damage, and I bring in Quake Quavel here because I want to take Orcorio out so that I can get spread damage on the Dragon Darts, and Quake Quavel will be faster than the Araquanid, and I really don't think Quake Quavel is going to go down to only one Dragon Darts, so I give up the ability to copy Orcorio's stats with Flamigo just so I can get the spread damage this one turn and still have Orcorio in the back. We knock off into Quake Quavel, and Araquanid is going to, I believe, and then we get the Moxie boost on Quake Quavel, but uh, Araquanid immediately takes it away. Which is really too bad, but now we have Orcorio and Flamigo versus Araquanid, and they are both more than capable of taking out Araquanid, because Araquanid is slow. But yeah, all around, uh, some pretty decent battles, actually. I wasn't expecting to win as many battles consecutively, except for that one battle where we obviously lost, but I know where I could have done better. Uh, I didn't expect all the battles to go like that, so I'm glad to see that the Dance Dance Revolution team actually had some play. But yeah, that was pretty nice. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, maybe consider leaving a like on the video and even consider subscribing. We are only on day four, however, we are not slowing down when it comes to releasing a new team every day. So if you want to keep up to date on the teams, subscribe so that you'll know whenever the video goes out. It should be around 5 p.m. Eastern every day, but sometimes it'll be a little bit later because of the things outside of my control. But as for the answer to the question, is DDR viable? The answer is no, no. I, I had to do a lot of work in all these battles in order to make DDR viable, but I still don't think it's that that good, but it is fun. It is fun. That's hard to take away. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.